Do you want to know what's the difference between bracketing and HDR? You do? Great! Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Rick McAvoy. I'm a photographer based in the UK. I photograph buildings. I specialise in architectural photography, construction photography, real estate photography. And I am also the creator of the Photography Explained podcast. So check out my blog, rickmcavoyphotography.com. Check out my podcast, all good provi podcast providers even. And now let me answer the question. Now, this is one of those things that is often misunderstood. I want to clarif clarify it once and for all, so we all know the difference and we can get on taking photos how we want to in peace without being criticised. Some of you will know what I mean by that. HDR. Well, what is HDR? HDR stands for High Dynamic Range. Hmm. A high dynamic range is an extended range of tones from lights to darks. HDR is a technique used to correct exposures in complex lighting situations. Bracketing. Bracketing is also known as auto exposure bracketing or AEB for short, especially in the Canon ecosystem. Now what's that? Well it's the process of automatically taking successive shots of the same subject with different exposures. Bracketing is a technique used to get correct exposures in complex lighting situations. Right then, well, there seems to be something going on here, doesn't there? There seems to be some, some similarity between the two, which I will get to the bottom of in this post, which I should say is published on my blog this week at rickmacavoyphotography.com. So bracketing is the actual process of taking successive photos at different exposures. HDR describes an overall process where photos with different exposures are combined to give a photo with a broader tonal range than you can get in a simple image capture. Right, that's the reading bit out of the way on my blog post. Well, what do I go to? Well, I'll tell you who I am first of all, because I don't know about you, but when I'm watching a video or reading a blog post, I like to know who the person is that I'm listening to or reading their words of. So I tell you who I am, just so you know, and to reassure you that I actually know about this stuff, I'm a photographer, I'm professionally qualified in photography, I'm also professionally qualified in construction, and I have experience of both lasting, well, well, a long time, okay? More than 30 years experience in both. So building photography, photographic buildings, call it what you want, this is my thing, this is what I do. And I also explain things in plain English without the irrelevant details, just like in this blog post. So, HDR is not a bad thing. Let's get that out of the way. HDR is fine. HDR is the same as auto bracketing. There, I said it. HDR, you take more than one photo. The exposures are different. And then you merge them together. Now, in Lightroom, the tool that you use is called HDR Merge. But when I'm, <laughs> and this is where it can get confusing, and I do sympathise with um, with people because we do make things complicated in photography. Auto bracketing is when you tell the camera, I want to auto bracket, as in, I'm going to take one photo at the correct exposure, one photo, two seconds overexposed, one photo, two seconds underexposed, excuse me. This is my Canon 16. <laughs> I'm on this old timer. This is what it sounds like. It's taken three photos. Now I use a self timer, which is another story. So that's. <laughs> Sorry, my camera's on. I just saw it. I thought, well, why not? So auto bracketing is a setting on my Canon 6D, it's a, it's a setting on all Canon cameras and you can change it. You can change, you, you can use third stop increments or half stop increments. So I can do, so it takes three photos and it takes a correct exposed photo, then a photo underexposed, then a photo overexposed. So the correct exposure gives you the general the general scene. The, the underexposed shot gives you the detail in the shadows that you don't get with the correctly exposed photo. The overexposed photo gives you the, the highlights and it gives you the stuff that, 
the correctly exposed photo can't capture because the problem is this what we can see with our eyes the camera cannot capture in one image sure there's lots of um electronic tech funkiness that is getting closer to it but the dynamic range that we can see with our eyes is bigger than the dynamic range that a camera can capture that's just a fact so we have to do something about it now my example that i always like to use and if you go to the blog post which was published this week i put three i actually put four photos i'm showing you the final processed image and then the correct exposure the two stops underexposed and the two stops overexposed images just to illustrate what i'm talking about and well and prove to you that what i'm talking about is correct if you're sat in a room it's a sunny day you've got a window if you're sat at the back of the room and you just look at the room in general everything looks fine and normal that's what you're used to seeing after all so everything out the window is fine you look in the shadows you can see fine because your eyes are adjusting instantly to the lighting around it but if you look at the general room you can you can see everything take a photo with the correct exposure as determined by your camera and its metering system and the biases contained within what you'll get is depending on the size of the window you won't get everything correctly exposed you'll probably get the window and the well not the window the bit that you can see through the window if it's a sunny day that will probably be brighter than the rest of the photo and there will probably be parts of that that are overexposed so the room in general might be okay it probably won't be it might be a little bit dark it's not they tend not to be too light it'll probably be a little bit dark because cameras tend to overcompensate for the brightness so it's going to be generally dark and then the shadows will be in underexposed as in you will not have captured all the data in the shadows so what you do you take a photo and you expose the meter for the what is in the window that's sorry that's your second photo so your first photo whatever the camera says we know it's not going to capture everything that's fine the second photo we we're taking a photo in effect of the bright bits which are the bits in the window and the third photo we're metering for the dark bits three photos you put them together and you've got a better photo you haven't got the full dynamic range that you can see with the human eye but you don't need it okay you don't need the full dynamic range you just need more of the highlights and more of the darks and that's hdr photography that's exposure bracketing one's a way of doing something one's a description for what you're doing they get confused they get mixed up people say hdr you shouldn't be doing it it's bad practice blah 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 nonsense it's a clever way of getting the best exposure you can and i do it all the time and nobody knows apart from you now i've told you no client knows that i've taken three photos and merged them together i've never been asked i've never told them but i know that my photos are better than photos that haven't been taken using this technique so if you're photographing something when you can't capture all the lights and darks you can use these techniques auto bracket bracketing <laughs> hdr I don't care what you call them, it's the principle of your metering for different parts of the photograph, then merging them together. Right, I'm done. Thanks for watching this video. Like I say, check out my blog, rickmacavoyphotography.com. Check out the Photography Explained podcast with its own website, photographyexplainedpodcast.com. And please, if you've enjoyed this video and you've learned something, feel free to subscribe. And next week, something new will be popping up on your Whatever it is in YouTube, is it a subscribe box? Or notif it's a notification, isn't it? Anyway, I publish a video once a week, which is about the blog post I've published. My podcast goes out fortnightly as of next week, so lots of ways to get in touch. If you want to get an email from me once a week, head over to my website, fill in the box, and thank you for giving me your email address, and thank you for trusting me with that very precious information, which I do take very seriously. Okay, I'm done. Thanks for watching. Hopefully catch you on the next video and I'll say goodbye. Cheers from me, Rick.